On this episode of Flying Like Iron Man, we're going to do some not so safe safety tests. So in the past few videos, we've kind of glossed over some of the blatant safety issues with a project like this. So we're going to do some safety tests to try and mitigate some of those risks. First up, battery safety. Now unless you've been living under a rock, you probably know that lithium based batteries are highly flammable and sometimes can be explosive. Now during our earlier testing we've damaged a few of the batteries, so we're going to use one of the damaged batteries that we don't want to use for the final project and try and explode it to see just how violent it would be. So we're going to explode two batteries. The first battery we're going to puncture. And when you puncture one of these lithium polymer batteries, you cause a chain reaction that usually ends in an explosion. Now that was a bit of an extreme case because we punctured it with about 20 nails. That being said, we wanted to see what the most explosive this battery could be so we can plan for the worst but hope for the best. Second up, we're gonna explode one of these batteries by overcharging it inside a lithium polymer safe battery charging bag. This is a Kevlar knit bag and it's supposed to mitigate the risk of charging a battery and having it explode. But the question is, will it actually protect us? Let's find out. we're actually overcharging the lithium polymer battery by using a series of car batteries. So we're putting too much power into the battery in order to cause it to explode. And as you see in the test, the bag didn't actually do much to protect us from an exploding battery. But that being said, this is a Kevlar knit bag and will actually protect the batteries from any kind of punctures, which as you saw in the first test, result in a very violent, very fast explosion. Also, we're not going to be charging the batteries on me, so we're not really at risk of the batteries exploding just from being charged. But what happens if you discharge the battery too much? Well, the battery tends to puff up and there is a chance that it could explode. But luckily, we have these little battery alarms. These little battery alarms are actually plugged into the cell balancing port of the lithium polymer battery. And what they do is they actually constantly measure the voltage of each individual cell. And if any one of those cells drops below the safe range, it'll start beeping really loudly telling us to stop draining this battery immediately. It's also important to note that the speed controllers we have have a low voltage cutoff. So if the batteries drop too low, the speed controllers will actually stop working, which if I'm in the air would be bad, I'm gonna fall down, <laughs> but at least the batteries won't explode. Now a lot of people have suggested, why don't we move away from batteries altogether and just have a tethered system? And while that would be awesome, we'd be able to fly for a lot longer than two minutes, it's just not gonna work. Why? Well, the cables will be too big. Let me give you an example. A typical North American home can only provide around 24 to 48 kilowatts. The entire flight system is expected to draw around 150 kilowatts. That's three to five houses worth of electricity. Now take a look how big those power lines are that go to your house. Imagine having three to four of those going to me and trying to fly. It's not flying like Iron Man if you're wearing a leash. Now I know what you're thinking. If not even my house could provide enough power for me to fly, how the heck are these little yellow batteries going to provide enough power to allow me to fly? Well, that's the beauty of batteries. They can put out a lot of power, but not for very long. For example, this is a 22 volt battery, which can put out around 200 amps. That's 4.4 kilowatts. That's a lot of power. If we had a whole bunch of these, we could very easily hit 150 kilowatts. The only thing is, they're only gonna last for a few minutes. But that's okay, because this is just a prototype. All right, so the next major safety issue we have to tackle is the EDFs themselves. Now the EDFs spin at around 40 to 50,000 RPM, which is really freaking fast. Just imagine trying to put your finger in there, or if the fan sucked up some dirt or rocks. What would happen? Would the fan explode, sending splinters of blade everywhere into me? Let's find out. What would happen if I put my finger in the EDF? Let's see. Safety first. <laughs> Just kidding. 
We're going to be using a hot dog to simulate my finger. So we did the hot dog test and that wasn't a problem. Uh, it didn't damage the EDF. We just know if I put my finger in there, I'd have a bad time. But what if it got hit with, say, a small rock, a piece of dirt, or any other kind of particulate that might get sucked into the fan while I'm flying? Is the EDF going to explode? I'm not sure. So let's up the ante a little bit with an airsoft gun. Did I hit it? All right, so one BB didn't seem to do anything, although we're not too sure, we have to review the footage still, but it may have actually just gone straight through. So we're gonna turn the speed up a bit, and we're gonna put the airsoft gun on automatic mode and let loose a whole bunch of BBs to see what happens. So that didn't seem to do much, which is a really good sign. That means the blades aren't going to explode easily. They might still, but this is, this is uh, very positive. All right. So those results are actually quite promising. Uh, the EDF didn't seem to take any damage, even when we shot with an airsoft gun. But I still don't like the idea of the possibility of accidentally getting my finger stuck in there or maybe a clothing getting sucked in. So we're gonna see if we can put some kind of mesh to protect the EDF and me from having anything getting sucked into it. So what we're actually using is a strainer. And this is our thrust test jig. And what we can do is we'll test the max thrust we can get out of this EDF, and then we'll test it again with this in place. There's a chance that because this slightly resists the air flowing in, it's going to result in a, uh, a drop in thrust. Hopefully it's marginal, and because I'd feel a lot safer having something like this covering the EDF. So we're just gonna test that again. This time we have the batteries in just a six cell format, so we won't get as much thrust out of the system but it'll be more accurate for us to measure the dis difference in thrust. All right, 50%. All right, about 3.3 kilograms of thrust. So putting an intake grill in front of the EDF resulted in about a 10% loss of thrust, which was kind of what we were expecting. It's not great, but safety first, we're probably going to need these intake grills. Now, another important thing to note is we can only put so much content in these videos. Uh, this is just a snapshot of some of the tests we've been doing. There's so much more stuff that goes behind the scenes and there's just not enough time for us to actually film and edit everything. So we're actually putting in a good 30 to 40 hours a week working on this flight project. We just try and edit in as much as we can to show you in this update. Now, as we mentioned in the last video, the biggest issue with this project is going to be funding. We need your help. We've started a GoFundMe campaign so you can financially support the project if you're able to. If you're not able to support us through GoFundMe, don't worry. There are lots of other ways you can support the channel which don't cost you any money. As many of you may know, I actually quit my full-time job as an engineer over a year ago now to focus on YouTube full-time, producing content for you guys. Since then, the channel has grown from 70,000 subscribers to over 800,000 subscribers, which is absolutely amazing. Thank you so much. Now, I've been on YouTube for about 10 years now, but during that entire time, I've only made around $50,000 from the ad revenue. Now, all that money has been reinvested into building this channel to what it is today. That includes building the team, buying tools, supplies, and creating the content for this channel. The problem is, this project is very expensive. To make this project possible, we're going to need your help. You can start by liking this video, leaving us a comment, and consider sharing it with your friends. Even if you're not planning on donating to the GoFundMe campaign, you should check it out anyways. We've put a ton of information about the project in the campaign, explaining exactly how we're going to achieve flight. Also, if you do support the GoFundMe campaign, that means you also get access to the private Discord chat room we have, where you can talk with other supporters of the project and the Hacksmith team one-on-one. -on -one. We're also planning on releasing all the design files to our supporters on the GoFundMe channel. So if you're interested in seeing where this goes, please consider donating. Now I am called the Hacksmith, so we're going to see if we can hack together our own EDFs to try and get past that expensive price point. We're going to try and 3D print our own EDF fan blades, and we're not too optimistic about this, but we're going to give it a shot anyways. Take a look. So what we did was we roughly upscaled the design of one of the existing EDFs in our 3D CAD software. Now we're going to try printing it. 
Now we don't have much experience in fluid dynamics, nor have the software to calculate the potential thrust, so we're just going to have to test it on the bench. This print doesn't look half bad. The surface finish is surprisingly good, but unfortunately it needs to be perfectly smooth. We're going to lose a lot of potential thrust because of these ridges and bumps. It's 180 mil diameter, which means an equivalent professionally made fan should be able to produce around 15 to 18 kilograms of thrust. Can we even support 15 kilograms off these blades? Let's try spinning it up. Jeez. All right, as you can see, 3D printing your own fans is proving to be a bit troublesome. But it's important to note we've done quite a bit of testing now, and we're still doing a lot more. I think we're on our 10th iteration of the fan design so far, and we're building upon uh, every test and learning a lot along the way. As you can see, we've broken the blades off a few, we've had the blades fly off, and a whole bunch of other stuff, but we're still trying a whole bunch of things. And once we have some conclusive results about can you print a 3D printed EDF, we're going to share that with you in a separate video. Well, that's all for this episode of Flying Like Iron Man. Don't forget to subscribe to make sure you get the next update as soon as it's out. Thanks again for watching, and don't forget to check out some of our other videos. We'd also like you to check out our GoFundMe campaign, which has lots of useful information about the Flying Like Iron Man project. And finally, sign up for Discord so you can chat with the Hacksmith team one-on-one -on, -one on our very own chat room.